Kick off. Okay. okay. I sent you a request, but we haven't sent it yet. Here we go. They're just connecting to us now. And go live. In a moment of anticipation. A moment. Okay. Good evening, everyone. This is uh, Rob from Lapbook, and I'm live here with uh, Luke and also with Stein from Schism. Gentlemen, um, good evening. Hello, Rob. Hi, hi, Stein. Uh, and hi, Luke. Hi. Okay. We have some. Stein, we have a few questions about Schism Lark. I know you've got a few things you want to talk to us about. So, uh, look, would you like to kick off with a, with a question? Yeah, I mean, uh, we wanted to uh, talk about Schism um, mainly because it looked really, really cool. It, it's um, post-apocalyptic. Uh, I love that. After the fall of 1947, yeah. Yeah, I love the phrase, science fiction and fantasy as meat to a post-apocalyptic skeletal frame. Who thought that bad boy up? Uh, that one was actually uh, set up by uh, my uh, the editor that I have who's editing my PDF. Uh, wow. for, uh, she, her and I had been uh, together for a long time, and she uh, she's like, this is worded poorly, Stein. Let me fix this for you. And I'm all like, wow. well, you're paid for. This is incredible. Now that is an, an, an amazing thing. So talk to me about Schism because um, so it's you say it's it's set in nineteen forty seven. Well, um, after the fall of nineteen forty seven, the, there was what? a great war in nineteen forty seven. Okay. okay. Uh, the northern and southern lights opened up as rifts in time and space, okay. and every one of the creatures that you, as a person, I, as a person, believe is legend. Okay. Manifested in this other alternate timeline. It's an alternate now timeline. Okay. Dragons, fairies, minotaurs, medusas, you name it. Things from the Cthulhu universe. Not Cthulhu, because I'm not going to copyright anything. But, yeah. you know, Cthulhu horrors that are beyond our kenning, they all showed up there. And they're like, well, this land is ours now. And the humans were like, uh, no. Yeah. So there was, there, was, there, was, there was a war that happened, and the factions of humanity broke down from there. And that's right, yeah, because you, you actually just say it, it's wartime mentally, every man for themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, I love these. I tell you for why I love these kind of LARPs is because, uh, and I was only saying this to Will from Curious Pastimes yesterday when we were at Gloucester at uh, What's Your Game, um, and that was that I don't like LARPs where everyone wins 100% of the time. I kind of like to really struggle with my LARP. Um, you know, kind of if you, if you don't do, if you don't think for yourself, if you don't follow, if you don't engage, you can can lose you know mm -hmm. um and i take it that's basically what your lops right because you say it's a buffer lot but um it is a buffer yes yeah. Uh, but uh if there are factions that are inherently opposed to each other right but whenever you see there's an outside threat from you uh you guys need to put those aside and go yeah. that's a dragon maybe we should not be fighting each other and fight the dragon instead because if we right. don't we're gonna all die nice. almost yeah. nice. now you say you meet um once a month from um and you don't gain december to february uh, i take it from your original comment about you know canada being particularly cold that's the reason why uh, yes um, uh, yeah well, it's, it's also hard to find sites <clears throat> right that right. are playable in the winter yeah. sure I, I so, that. so renting a site to play yeah. is even a harder thing than just playing. Right, because there's right. insurance concerns and lots of other things you have to be worried about. Mm -hmm. And playing in winter, especially whenever the temperature can get down to negative seven thirty-seven degrees Celsius. Yeah, yeah. At night. Okay. And if it's a weekend mark at night, I don't want my people dying of you know frostbite or hypothermia. I'm sorry, so you're not happy for them to die of frostbite or hypothermia, but you are happy for them to die at Cthulhu, uh, monster-style bird dragons, um, orcs, anything else they can think of, which is not cold. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah not, the real, right. not the real cold. Like, and like I think fake it's, dying is preferred to real dying. Absolutely. I mean, at least you have standards, and I think that's that's, that's a fair crack, isn't it? Look, cold, we draw the line. Come on, stop taking the piss. Anything else, though, that you can Anything drink, else. you yeah. can well, absolutely die of, that's fine. You were wandering a labyrinth, and yeah. the Minotaur happens to kill you. Yeah. Sorry about your luck. You lose a big toe, we yeah. draw the line there. Yeah. That's right, but just, yeah. just not cold. Come on, let's exactly. just have let's have some parameters here. Yeah. Not the cold. Not the cold. Yeah. Not the cold. <laughs> I mean, oh, I, 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 that's, that's really interesting to us because we just in this country, so we just never see we, we never see temperatures like that. Uh, people are kind of complaining about the cold and it gets down to about negative. Well, but it gets down to about negative two or three. Yeah. 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 And even then we moan. I suppose it's it, you are right though. So if you are um, if you're camping. Or if you're if you're in half the scout camps, we, we tend to find that uh, scout camps uh, seem to draw. It's a, it's another source of income for them because they they just make really naturally very very good um, you know kind of a larping um, you know e event uh, places. Um, but the problem is you are either camping or you're in very basic accommodation. And of course, when it's really really cold, what you don't want to be doing, no matter how good or immersive the whole scenario is, if it's bloody freezing, then that causes massive problems. You know. I've I personally, as a player in another LARP that I've been to, <laughs> yeah. have been that player when I oh. was cold and miserable. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I understand I'm supposed to have a certain type of costume for this. Yeah. I'm gonna go put on a second layer of clothes underneath my costume just so yeah. I can be warm and stop being miserable. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just drink. <laughs> We, we found uh, that the more you drink, the more you forget about the cold. You kind of don't care about the cold or being killed by a, a minotaur. I mean, obviously, we're not up to Canadian kind of standards where the cold means everything. Look, you can die, but just not by the, you know, kind of uh, the frost. Um, yeah, we prefer but, yeah, to have that. We just, we just drink. Uh, and we found that, I, I, I say, it, it's a way to deal with it. I'm not saying it's the right way. It's just a way to deal with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. should I go into the way the factions broke down after the Great War? I now that we discussed the Great War. Yes, please. That'd be great. We'd like to learn more about the game structure and what's going on mm -hmm. in there. So, All right. Yeah, well, please do. And the Great War happens. Uh, the world itself uh, decides to uh, get rid of the nuclear armament to attack the dragon's nests that are building in Upper Russia because of the cold there, and the oh, open yeah. spaces. So, cold open spaces, dragon nests forming, the world bombs that area with nuclear radiation, the world goes to poop, um, and then the faction of the community break down. Uh, there's a, a six or seven of them, and I'll go over the brief synopsis of them real quickly. Uh, anarchists, uh, those are the homeless. Mm -hmm. Real quick synopsis: If you're if you're a homeless person, you're going to come in contact with what we call rifters most often. Yep. So you also know how to fight rifters the easiest as like a faction advantage. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a, a faction called hybrids. Now that breaks down into two camps. Uh, the hybrids they're either a half human, half animal because the rift manipulated their DNA. Or it goes further back and it manipulates it even further and it's a half human, half plant. Okay. So right. costuming wise, we gave a lot of uh, variance there to allow players to express their own agency. Yeah. Lazareans, uh, basically the aristocratic undead, but it all starts from Lazarus. He, he was the first one that left his tomb. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, there's the New World Order. Well, which basically, uh, they're the 1% of the 1%, not because they had the most money, but because they're the ones, sorry, they're the ones who understood how to make gunpowder. Right. Okay, yeah, that makes a difference. Yeah, if you understand how to make gunpowder, and you can kill a thing from afar, rather than trying to stab at it, and it's chewing on you a little, uh, it's a little better to kill things from afar, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As long as it's not cold. As long as it's not cold. Well, kind of hard to kill the cold with a bullet. Now, I need to draw your attention to half man, half plant. Uh, yes. How's that working out? Uh, well, again, it's a, it's the, the, the rift, 
manipulated the DNA in the womb of a person. So they come out with mutations that are plant-like. Um, as in a classic example that most people can understand from a comic book point of view, Poison Ivy from the DC Comics. Right. Yep. Got you. Yep. That's half half person, half plant. Wow. That's nice. Uh, just, a, just a couple more here. Okay. Uh, next gens. They're the people who want to take technology and meld technology with the body, and they're the next generation of humanity. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a play on words there. Uh, refugees. Now, these are interesting. Um, uh, refugees are Rifspawn, which is your dragons, your minotaurs, what have you, that have been banished from their own Rift world, and they've been sent here as a, as a punishment. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can play a bad guy, uh, but you have to earn the right to do so, but yeah. it's still in the works of being a thing. Right. There's, there's just two more I'll go over real quickly. We've got Cynics. They're the ones who don't directly involve themselves in the Rift War, which is, you know, saving humanity from the bad guys. They, but they do provide um, hospice for and, and respite for those who are fighting the war. You need something, they can get it from you. Or rather, for you. Yeah. And that was a bit of... Unsworn. Unsworn. They're the ones yeah. who are the rest of the world. Uh, right. If you haven't sworn to a faction yet, you can actually choose to come into the game unsworn, yep. learn about the factions in-game, and choose a faction in character. That's cool, actually. I like that idea that you can actually come into the game and establish your allegiances, if you like. Yeah. Um, and then well, you can, it also helps you learning the system. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say, great for new people, because too many times so you kind of pick a character and then you see someone else playing something else and you think oh that's just so much more me um so i mean how many people does a um a standard event that you put on have we've had our play test season um our play test season had upwards of 10 people yeah okay at, at the event it's small we're, we're a growing larp i understand that uh and from that play test season to season one, we've taken our roles and revamped them, and so we're hoping to attract a lot more attention to the system. I want to give a shout out to you guys and thank you mm -hmm. for allowing me to be on your platform and letting me get the kind of exposure I need. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that's that that pleasure. That's what pleasure. We, that's what Lab Book's here for. It's, that's what we do. That's what the platform's all about. Is letting people. Yeah. Is telling people about all the different LARPs and how they burn and where they are and what what they're like. So that's that, 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 thank you. No, no, that's that's really cool. So um, when is your next event? We're slated to have the first event of season one in April okay. of this year. That's a good nice. Because cool. um, the because and well, up to March. Yeah, uh, get, the wind gets really cold here. Yeah, uh, and we're probably going to have a a day event on a Saturday sometime in April. Yeah, uh, uh, if you if you would go if you're on Facebook and you want to find us, it's Schism uh, colon Southern Ontario. That's where you find us. Right, and uh, we will be announcing events on that Facebook page if you're interested. Okay, when we put this video out, we'll make sure that there's a page that has that link on there as well, Stein, so that um, yeah, people can can watch watch the interview and, and then find you again easily. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, that's Marvelous. Okay. So once you've done uh, your April event, uh, will you do others to to continue that? I mean, how many will you oh, do okay. throughout the year? It, this this is a continual LARP. It, it, sure. it, it starts once the season starts. It, the season runs for the season, yeah. and then the next season will pick up after the first season ends. And we'll have sure. we'll a re small recap over the winter months of the kinds of things you experience in the winter cold here sure. and how you survive and that kind of thing. Nice. And then uh, and then all, all the uh, there'll be small little plot hooks throughout the winter. Sure. But that's what I said. Just continue really the plots. A, a, a lot of big plans. Yeah, big, plans so big, like, big plans scope. can yeah, become big, big scope. reality, and that, that, that's yeah, the yeah. important part, right? Yeah, no, 
And it's really, really difficult, isn't it, to uh, start a LARP. Rob and I both have done LARPs where um, there, there's only really been between 10 and 30 people, you know, and, and they are considered quite small. But I, I kind of like the small LARPs, I have to say. There's more to them. You, you're forced to then get involved with it. Um, and I think when you've got a new LARP with uh, new, fresh ideas, it's uh, it's always a really, really good thing. So I wish you the absolute best of luck with this because uh, mm. let's hope it pans out. Yeah. I well, we've... We I started this mission to create a new LARP yeah. Yeah. six years ago. I looked at the LARPing landscape. We had post-apocalyptic was its own little bubble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Horror was its own little bubble. Yeah. Fantasy was its own little bubble. And um, science fiction, again, own little bubble. And none of them were having really any kinds of overlap yeah. that was any, that anything meaningful. Yeah. And I looked around and I was like, you know, this isn't going to work for me. Yeah. So yeah. I fixed it. I actually made my own LARP from scratch. I'm working on this for seven years now. Yeah. Uh, so that shows you how long it takes. Yeah, to yeah. Oh, no, it, from scratch yeah. with rules and new fresh ideas and a new fresh take on how the world ends. Yeah, yeah. Ends. That's true. Uh, can I just get in a second? We've had a question from the audience. Oh, um, it's from Peter. Oh, I missed it. It's okay. I've, I've got it there. It's from Peter, and he's what he's asking is, how does the game work? Is it based on a set of three to four hour linears, or is the constant time in? I think he's asking about the structure of a, of an event. Is it sort of three to four sort of episodic segments, or a number of episodic segments over the course of an event, or is it like one big long evolving story arc? That makes sense. So we for day events. We'll do a check-in, yeah, uh, and then we'll and we'll, we, that's where we check in your your character sheet. Uh, we hand those out to those who have pre-registered. We will do weapons checks for your buffer weaponry and your nerf weaponry, uh, or some projectile that fires some kind of ammo, uh, not airsoft or paintball, but like nerf darts. Yeah, and I use nerf as a generic here. Mm. Uh, and then after that, we'll do <clears throat> game on. Uh, and then from game on, you go from game on to game end. And then nice. there's modules that are sent out from game on to game end. Yep. And you could, there's two kinds of modules we do. It's we send in a module, uh, and then you can you can be like, well, I'll opt out. Or there's, we send out modules where you're you're choo- you have to force the opt in because the opt in modules are harder. You choose mm. as a character to actually opt into that module right. rather than opting out of all the others. The mm. opt-in modules are harder. They're designed for more experienced players. They're designed to test your own endurance, your own uh, mental stuff, because there's because this is a war. So yeah. there's some bad stuff that can happen in opt-in uh, modules. Mm. Yeah, Tor- right, that sounds uh... Yeah, that sounds totally immersive, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, it's um, totally, totally, totally yeah. their choice too, so people can take the game in a way that suits yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on top of that, some people have moments where they're like, I don't know if I want to see that, so they'll go over here. Yeah. Whenever we, 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 just, we don't opt in, so that way if people know, I don't really want to be around torture. Yeah. I'm not going to go with those guys because they're going to yeah. do a thing with a dude and they're going to torture and I just have no, no stomach for that. Yeah. yeah. So you've kind of dealt with uh, individual, uh, not state of mind, but I suppose their own moral compass because some people are absolutely fine when it comes to LARP, anything kind of goes. But yes. I think uh, a lot of people also, the, the, the way that they feel generally about life is the way they kind of like that and, and, and is totally reflected in the LARP no matter what character they're doing. So I, I see what you're doing there. And that's a, it's a brilliant way of doing it, isn't it? Just opting yeah. in and out is brilliant. No, that's yeah. Like, that people follow their... Yeah. They don't have to apologize for doing something somebody, somebody can't, doesn't like, but give them the option on being part of or not part of. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I think that's great. Yeah. And the that's only other thing I can mention that puts us apart from a lot of the LARPs that are, are currently out there right now, at least from the ones I've experienced, was... Um, a lot of the LARPs, whenever you're doing combat, there's a lot of numbers that are called, yeah. like one, one, two, 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 three, moment, that kind of thing. Yes. We don't have numbers. It's if you get hit with something, yeah. it's one damage. Yeah. 
I don't care if you've gotten shot or gotten punched. It's one mm -hmm. damage. There's no calls of numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only increases to that are like words, double, triple. And that, that's where our, our calls end. Mm. Just really simple to follow then. So the, 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 the focus is more on the idea of I'm hitting you rather mm. than I'm hitting you and calling numbers. So it clogs the system if there's a lot of numbers being called. Sure. Yeah, actually, I agree with that. I play monsters quite a bit and I find it really awkward when I get like one number from somebody else, a different number from somebody else, another number it's from somebody else. It's hard to do else. math on the fly. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You just realize yeah. I have 10, if I have 10 health levels yeah. and I've been hit five times, you now know how many you have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Nice and simple. But yeah. Well, but when you're in a massive uh, battle, I've often found that it, it is very hard to keep, um, you know, um, keep an eye on what's actually going on and be realistic, uh, you know, with it. I think most people who go into a battle probably don't come out very well, um, no. you know, if they were to actually take all the hits. So uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great way of dealing with it. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, I've got nothing more to ask. So where can we find you on Facebook then? Uh, it's a schism yep. yeah. in Copeland, Southern Ontario. That's so wonderful. Too. I like to say we'll get a link out. We'll get some links out with this video as well, so people yeah. will be able to find you easily, hopefully. And also, I like to point out, Stein was really great. He's put in a, uh, a lab profile for our lab profile section. So also, if you yeah. want to go to labbook.com, you can learn more there as well. Just have a search for schism, and you'll find it. That is it. Marvelous. That's great. We'll say again. Uh, thanks, Luke. Thank Peter. Thank uh, thank Rob. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Peter. Thank you for asking questions because yeah. the more you engage with me, the yeah. more I can engage with you. Yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. That's well, hopefully, point. will you um, will you come back to us once hmm. you've done um, April's gig? I would and maybe love, mm. I would love to come back. Yeah, yeah. stay in contact. Work yeah. Cheerfully, we'd love that if you would stay stay in touch. That'd be brilliant. That's marvelous. Okay. And I better see the two of you on my battlefield soon. Yeah, <laughs> you will sometime. Well, yeah, can it was Brexit's coming, so uh, it's probably quicker than you <laughs> we, think. Actually, we yeah, might need a place to we, stay. We may be back. All right, I got, I got floor space for you. <laughs> <laughs> We're in desperate need of friends globally. Yeah. So uh, there we are. Thank you so much for uh, right, for care, spending some time with us. Okay. I think thank you. Thank you for being such a good guy. We're going to stop the stream now. Just an apology for the beginning where we had a few technical blips, but uh, thank you all very much. I'm just going to say goodbye to everyone on Facebook. Bye. Bye.